in Virgil, just outside of Niagara-on-the-Lake. Fall is here, winter is just around the corner. It's cold, it's damp, but we're at Silversmith Brewery. We're gonna go inside, talk to the brewer. I'm gonna break down a lamb, probably gonna drink some beer. We're gonna eat some food, talk to the chef, drink some more beer. I'm Jamie Waldron, and this is Indie Kitchen. my way inside this beautifully restored church. It's honestly, it's a stunning facility. I'm uh, waiting for head brewer Chris Poncion to give us a lowdown on what's happening. But in the meantime, I've had the barkeeps here pour me a silversmith black lager. Uh, and I guess I'll have to wait and sample some wares. So we're in the beer hall, we made it. That uh, pathway of about 20 steps that got us up to the bar here at the beer hall in Silversmith. And uh, honestly, like, what a fantastic facility. <laughs> we got this building out of sheer luck. So uh, we were in here one day, one of us an antique store looking around, and we were kind of talking about how this is the building that we're looking for. It's got quality, uh, character, yeah, it's got charm and ambiance. And as we were talking about it, the owner of the antique store of this building was here asks us some questions, what he gets talking about. So we told him, you know, our goals, we wanted to have a brewery, and he says, well, I, I could retire. In 2011, in November of the same year, we bought it from him, and in March we moved in. Black lager, something totally different, because I won't mention names of some of the major manufacturers that are producing lagers. I mean, this is just like a, its own thing. Black lager's been around for almost 600 years. Okay. Uh, originates in a small part of eastern Germany, and, um, this was, you know, our, our brewmaster decided he wanted to try it. He'd had some, so mm -hmm. like, take a crack at making that. Okay. And it's kind of just evolved from there mm -hmm. and become very popular. So yeah. in Niagara, when we started making this beer, there was no black lager on the market. And now, uh, I was telling you before, we do about 225,000 liters. Mm -hmm. Black lager makes up almost 80% of all the beer we make in South. And uh, so the evolution of the brewery itself, like, um bit of background like are, are you come from a brewing background I don't have a brewing background but I do have a silversmithing background so that's where the name comes from so we've been silversmiths back to in my family back to about 1580 and we really wanted to capture kind of some genuine personality and character and history that belonged to us so that we could carry that personality through into the business and into the space and uh, we thought that that would be a, a great way to do that hey listen uh I want to thank you. I've been a fan of the brewery for a long time. It's been uh, an education to come in and see how you guys are making this beer that I've enjoyed for so long. So again, yeah, thanks very much and uh, cheers, man. Cheers, thanks. I have uh, butchered here at Silversmith for, oh my goodness, I think this is our fourth dinner deconstructed that we've done here. In past, we've covered, oh man, we did uh, boar, we did uh, some beef, we did uh, some Berkshire pig, and now we're into some lamb. So this side of lamb is uh, was 31 pounds. All right, want to take the part? I'll, I will take a sirloin if I'm just having like an undressed cut, something that's just going to require salt and pepper, but then like a lamb stew, a curry or something like that, like from the shoulder. It's just Kind of my favorite things anyway. So we're here talking to Matt Kershaw, the co-owner and executive chef of The Other Bird. Uh, Matt, this is uh, quite an interesting event. Not only like are they getting this visual demonstration of how to cut up an animal, you are really, really close to the clientele as well. Like, How is that different from what you're normally used to in a restaurant setting? For me, I, 
I like people. I'm not one of those chefs who likes needs to hide in the back. I like socializing. I like talking to people. I'm used to doing dinner parties where people are in the kitchen, and I love seeing people's reactions. I like seeing that first bite. I'm like, are they thinking what I'm hoping they're thinking? You know? Yeah, I know. That's great. I mean, the the overall uh, feelings of the, the evening were just like, everyone was just blown away, right? So, cool. I mean, that's got to be gratifying. Of course. That's why we do it, right? I mean, no one went into this business because I'm like, oh, I'm going to make a lot of money being a chef. Right. It's, uh, it's a super gratifying business. Um, you get to see immediate reactions. You get to make people happy. And you get to do something you love. And working with lamb tonight, how yeah. does uh, how does that make you feel? Like, is that is that an ingredient that you use a lot? Yeah, I mean, lamb for me, um, I was so happy when I was told I get lamb. A, I love lamb. B, lamb reminds me of my childhood. We were the, the British family that I lamb every week. Yeah, it's my favorite meat. Cool. So, were there any dishes in particular that you were looking forward to preparing? Is there a certain cut of the lamb that uh, really kind of gets you going? I think the ones I'm least excited about are the ones that don't have fat. Like the, the rack of lamb, is, ironically. I find kind of boring, you know? It's nice, yeah. it's tender, yeah. sure. But I, I get excited about like the slow, long cooks, the braises and the long, slow roasts, the, the fatty shoulders and the bellies. That fat from the lamb, everyone knows lamb and fat are sort of synonymous. I mean, right. that's, that's what it's about. Yep. So like long, slow braises and those types of cuts are generally something that we associate with like uh, in the cooler months. Yep. So you own a number of restaurants. Yep. How, many, how many restaurants are you part of now? Uh, six. Six, and a hotel. And a hotel. Okay, so like, are you guys in that mindset? Do your yep. menus change with the seasons? Yeah, like um, depending on the, some of our places are changing weekly. It's a blackboard menu and whatever's happening is happening. Some is a little more seasonal and then some have a somewhat static menu, but it really depends. But you're right, as the, as the season go on, you want more calories, you want more fat. And we actually see an uptick in our in business at our certain restaurants that are very meat centric. Okay. Because people want that right. stuff in their belly in their winter. Switching gear outside of the food thing, uh, what do you think of the beer? It's a great beer. It's a great beer. <laughs> like as a restaurant group it's nice when you get a certain size. A lot of people come after you to like buy from us, buy from us, buy from us. Yeah. I think these guys, their timing might be right. We're looking for a make, doing a big switch. Oh. I love their beer. Yeah. So I think we're going to be seeing a lot more of their beer at our places. Cool. It was an honor to work with you tonight. I Cheers, appreciate man. it. Awesome. Great night. Thanks.